It's time for another look at amazing archaeological discoveries from around the world. You know what we do on this channel. We go looking for news of fantastic finds, and we bring them all back to you in videos like this one. We've got some stunning stories for you, so let's not waste any time. We'll dive into them right now. Many of the ancient civilizations that lived in Central and South America played a mysterious ball game. We don't know the rules of the ball game, but we do know that the game was sometimes connected to sacrificial rites. We also know that the game spread as far north as Puerto Rico. We know that because of the existence of Puerto Rico's Caguano Ceremonial Ball Court site in Caguano, Utuando. Archaeologists consider the site to be one of the most important in all of the West Indies. The ball courts were created by the Taino culture, which existed here about 800 years ago. There are 30 courts here in total upon which the Taino played a variation of the South American ball game called Batty. The same game is known to have been played in Jamaica, Cuba, and the Bahamas in the distant past. It's thought that the courts may have had other functions, such as being used for ceremonial dances and perhaps even as a place from which to make astronomical observations. The U.S. government added Kaguana to the National Register in 1992 and declared it to be a U.S. National Historic Landmark in 1993. There's no archaeological site in the world more famous than Pompeii in Italy, and seemingly no end to the incredible number of ancient treasures that have been found there. Discoveries are still made at Pompeii all the time, but the House of Menander was discovered way back in 1930. The house, which was actually an enormous villa with double baths, contained a treasure collection of fine silver. Archaeologists recovered 118 silver objects from the House of Menander, including drinking jugs, bowls, cups, salt shakers, ladles, spoons, and a pair of silver mirrors. All of the items were found together, hidden in the bottom of a wooden casket and wrapped in a blanket along with jewelry and coins. Experts suspect that the collection represents the life savings of whoever lived in the villa. It seemed whoever lived here had a taste for the classics and also a taste for extremely expensive cutlery and dinner service. The finest items in the range come with gold embossed motifs, showing traditional Roman mythological scenes like the Twelve Labors of Hercules. The entire collection is now held in the National Archaeological Museum in Naples. Thanks to ground-penetrating radar technology and drone photography, it's now possible to make archaeological discoveries that were previously invisible to the naked eye. One such discovery happened in Koje, Denmark, in September 2014, when archaeologists found an entire Viking ring fortress. It's one of only seven known fortresses of its kind. They're known as Trelleborg Fortresses, and there are other examples in Firkit, Agersborg, Nonnenbakken, and Trelleborg itself. All of them appear to have been built during the reign of King Harold Bluetooth in the late 10th century. They have several features in common, including ring ramparts, moats, and carefully planned street systems leading to four gate openings in the walls. Once the presence of the fortress was identified by using non-invasive technology, a full excavation of the site was carried out. The results of that excavation revealed that life inside the fortress probably didn't end happily for its occupants. There are telltale signs of a large-scale fire at the site, with all four gates burned down. One burned gate could be an accident, but for it to happen to all four, suggest that this fortress fell victim to a well-planned attack. We go to Spain now, where archaeologists discovered a remarkably well-preserved Visigoth sarcophagus in January 2022. The discovery was made at the site of a former Roman villa called Los Villaricos in Mula. Experts believe that the coffin was buried during the 6th century, a time when this part of Spain was still a part of the Visigoth kingdom. It's made of stone, is seven feet long, and is covered in swirling geometric patterns and ivy leaf designs. If the sarcophagus is from the 6th century, it challenges the existing theory that Los Villaricos was abandoned by the start of the 5th century. 
One possibility is that it was briefly reoccupied by the Germanic invaders after its abandonment, but Germanic invaders would be unlikely to create a sarcophagus like this one. Even stranger than the apparent timing of the burial is the presence of a Chiro Christogram. The Visogoths did eventually turn to Christianity, but they were still largely pagan when this stone coffin was created. The identity of the person within the sarcophagus has not yet been confirmed. Speaking of seemingly out-of-place discoveries with Christian connections, an enormous marble cross was found in Pakistan in June 2020. The cross weighs three tons, which begs the question of how it ended up so high up in the mountain ranges of Skardu close to the village of Kavardo. Scientists always have a hard time trying to date artifacts made from stone, but they believe the cross to have been carved around 1,200 years ago. The style of the cross is thought to be significant it's been described by experts as being a Thamonian cross of India. It's the largest example of its kind ever to be discovered on the subcontinent and is a relic of a time when Christianity was the dominant religion in this part of the world. There are no Christian families living in the surrounding area now, but there may have been a church on the mountainside more than a thousand years ago. Christian tradition holds that the religion was first brought to the region by the Apostle Thomas in the year 52. But there's no direct evidence to support that belief. Ishibutai Kofun is the largest known megalithic structure in Japan. That's a good fact, but it's probably the least interesting thing about the stone tumulus. It was created during the Asuka period, and appropriately enough, it can be found in Asuka in Japan's Nara prefecture. Many historians believe the structure to be the tomb and final resting place of Soga no Amako, a powerful clan leader who passed away in the year 626. There's lots of circumstantial evidence to support that idea, but nothing conclusive enough for us to be absolutely certain. When translated into English, the word Ishibutai means stone stage. It's an accurate description of the tomb's appearance. The ancient Japanese text Nihon Shoki records that Soga no Amako passed away on the 20th day of the 5th month in 626 during summer, and that he was buried in a tomb at Momohama. That's consistent with the tomb's location. It would also explain why the earthen mound that once covered the tomb was removed several centuries ago, as the Soga clan was retroactively punished by the imperial government long after he died. We know that we've only just left Pakistan, but we're going back there now to check out the Ranakot Fort. Some people call this structure the Great Wall of Sindh and argue that it ought to be as famous as the Great Wall of China. The fort is enormous and can be found in Pakistan's Jamshoro district. Calling it the Great Wall of Sindh isn't entirely accurate because the wall isn't technically part of the fort. Instead, it's the fort's outermost defense system. There are also three smaller walls within the perimeter of the larger one. If you include the wall as part of the fort, which not everyone does, it's the largest fort in the world. The walls are 21 miles in length, and the area of the fort covers more than 40 square miles. There are microstates in the region smaller than that. The strangest thing about Ranakot Fort is that nobody knows why it was built, or even when it was built. It's built in the middle of nowhere, and there's never been a settlement anywhere near it. There was nothing for the fort to protect. Estimates of its age range from the 9th century to the 19th. The Pakistani government has never allowed archaeologists to dig at the site, and until they do, it's doubtful that we'll get any answers. About 3,000 years ago, people started making petroglyphs at a site called Bidzar in Gitter, Cameroon. Once they'd started, they continued adding to the collection for over 2,500 years before stopping abruptly around three centuries ago. There's an ongoing campaign for UNESCO to recognize Budzer as a World Heritage Site, but it might disappear before that happens. The site is currently threatened by marble and cement manufacturing companies in the region who have no regard or care for history. There are about 500 engravings at the site today, 
but there were far more before the cement companies moved in. In the majority of cases, it appears that the petroglyphs were created using a simple hammer and chisel. Nobody's sure what they're supposed to represent, but it's been speculated that the images might tell stories from ancient myths. On the other hand, it's thought to be just as possible that they're a cosmogony. The idea of the images telling a consistent story that began 3,000 years ago and continued for such a long time is incredible, and it would be a tragedy if it was lost. When a Chinese nobleman was laid to rest in his purpose-built tomb 2,000 years ago, he was buried with an enormous bowl of his favorite beef soup. When the tomb was reopened by archaeologists in 2016, the soup was still there inside the bowl. It's amazing to think the meal has survived for such a long time, but we definitely wouldn't recommend trying to eat it. Beef soup is considered to be China's national dish, and scientific analysis of this bowl has confirmed that there hasn't been any significant change to its recipe in two millennia. It even has two tiny strips of oxen in it, which is consistent with the way that beef soup is made in rural China. We'd love to tell you whose bowl of soup it is, but that's an official state secret. The tomb is in Henan province, but the identity of the person inside it has been kept secret for what we're told are security reasons. Apparently, it's still just as important to keep their identity a secret now as it was six years ago when the tomb was found. Who could it possibly be? There are plenty of ancient rock carvings in Bulgaria but none quite so odd as the Madara Rider in Kaspachin. It was carved about 1,300 years ago, and for some reason, the artist who created it decided to carry out their work more than 70 feet above ground level. Quite how they did that is unknown, as there was no such thing as a climbing harness back then. Their artwork depicts a hunter on a horse standing triumphantly over a fallen lion while an eagle and a dog look on. The quality of the work isn't outstanding, but the fact that it's on the side of an almost vertical cliff makes it fascinating. Archaeologists think that it was carved somewhere close to the year 710 based on the inscriptions that surround it, which record events that happened in the early 8th century. The events are connected to paganism, which suggests that this might have been a sacred pagan site prior to the arrival of Christianity in the country. The Madara Rider is considered to be a national icon in Bulgaria and has in the past been stamped on the nation's coinage. The Palermo Stone is in some ways the oldest history book in the world. It's called the Palermo Stone because of the city in which it was found in the capital city of Sicily in 1877, but it's not Italian or Sicilian in origin. The stone is Egyptian, and the information inscribed upon its surface tells us the story of the first five dynasties of ancient Egypt, beginning in the year 2925 BCE and tracking important events through to 2325 BCE. It must have been created somewhere close to the year 2325 BCE, so how accurate the information about events that happened 600 years earlier might be is unknown. How the artifact ended up in Palermo is unknown, but it's only a single fragment of what would have been a much larger stella. Experts estimate that the full piece would have been six feet long and probably stood in a temple. Our only information about some events in Egyptian history, including the invasion of Nubia during the reign of Sneferu, comes from this object. The stone tells us that Sneferu's forces came back from their invasion with 2,000 stolen cattle and 7,000 Nubian slaves. But that might be either a boast or an exaggeration. Fast food is seen as a plague of the modern age, but it isn't. It's been around for as long as people have been cooking and selling food. We can back that statement up because archaeologists found an ancient fast food outlet in Pompeii in December 2019. The correct way to refer to it would be as a thermopolium. It would have been owned and staffed by someone who batch cooked food at home, then brought it here so it could be reheated and sold to the general public, along with a glass or two of red wine. An examination of the storage containers found inside the thermopolium revealed them to be full of chicken and duck, along with pork, beef, and snails. Whoever ran this food stall 2,000 years ago clearly believed in keeping a varied menu. 
The thermopolium was in such incredibly good condition when it was found that experts wondered whether it could be refurbished and put back into use. And it turns out that it could. After extensive repair work, it reopened in December 2020 and now serves authentic old-style Pompeii fast food to tourists. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.